been blessed. Um, it was based on God reclaiming back what it is and focusing it on us, that goes through trials, tribulations, difficulties, helping us to understand that we can be overcome. Before I start, let me share the story of the community that utilized the warm voice. The story is told of a community of happy people where there was no violence, but all the joy, happiness, and peace. Everyone had a small, soft, fuzzy bag that was given at birth. Whenever people reached into this bag, we were able to, they were able to pull out a warm fuzzy, which when given to anyone going through unpleasant experiences, made them feel warm, fuzzy, and happy. People were always giving or receiving them, and since they were always living freely, getting enough of them was never a problem. There was always time to go around, and so everyone felt warm and fuzzy most of the time. One day, a bad witch who made potions for sick people became very angry because everyone was so happy and feeling good and no one was buying her products. The witch was clever and devised a wicked plan. One morning, while two young people were passing her, she pretended to have fainted. And when the young people gave her a warm fuzzy, she said, if you keep giving those away, you will soon run out, and then there won't be any left for you. They were astonished and asked her, Do you mean that there isn't a warm fuzzy in our bag every time we reach into it? She answered, No, absolutely not. And once you run out, that's it. You don't have any more. With this, the witch flew away, laughing and cackling. The young people took it to heart and stopped giving and receiving warm fuzzies. They began to complain or suck when others gave more than warm fuzzies. See, everyone started to hoard and eventually stopped giving warm fuzzies. The result was that people began to shrivel up and occasionally some died from lack of warm fuzzies. The community became violent, robberies and all types of crimes were dated. The peaceful, loving community was no longer. More and more, people went to the witch to buy their products that did not offer love, peace, joy and kindness. Years passed and this violent community got violent. Tim and Maggie, two years, went to visit their grandparents for a summer vacation and saw many hoarded warm fuzzies in the closet and asked what they were. Their grandparents told them the story of the, of the days when everyone was given and received more warm fuzzies and how they were peaceful and happy the people in the community were as opposed to the present. They were told that the violence in the community began after people started hoarding them. The young people decided to collect as many, as many warm fuzzies as they could, and get stuck and started giving them to people as they saw they needed. As they did, others started to do likewise, and after a while, everyone was giving and receiving warm fuzzies again, and gradually the love, peace, and joy, kindness, and happiness returned to the community. Let's go ahead, Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that as we deliver this sermon, your words speak in our mouth, Lord. That you will, um, help me find this, okay. able to please speak and that people will see your words. Amen. This story that I just read is an example of how God, the creator of the universe, intended our society to be. Full of love, peace, joy, kindness, and happiness. When he created the universe, there was an abundance of peace, immeasurable love, unlimited joy, endless happiness, perfect health, wholesome use of time and face-to-face -face communication. And it was good, but Satan twisted this perfect world so that it became shameful to be naked. Sweet dreams turned to nightmares, the blame game became the national sport, good meals depended on the sweat of the breath, and childbearing became excruciatingly painful. Not to mention domestic violence becoming the order of the day, love triangles becoming the norm, as well as, as well as substance abuse and dependency. Christ chose not to allow your business to spare the instruction to come to me. If we look at chapters 2, verse 11 to 15, it reads, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to the ungodliness, ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in the present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory, the, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus, who gave Himself for us 
to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. These, then are the things you should teach. Encourage and repeat with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. In order to better understand this powerful text, let me read Titus 2, verses 1 to 10, just so you can get a bit of context. Um, in my Bible, it's the title of the chapter is called <laughs> Doing Good for the Sake of the Gospel. It reads, You, however, must teach what is appropriate to sound up the doctrine. Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound of faith, in love and in endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderous or rejected to much money, but to teach what is good, then they can urge the younger women to look at husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the words of God. Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled in everything, set them, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, so it show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing left to say about it. Teach slaves to be the subject of their masters in everything, to try and please them, not to talk back to them, not to steal from them, but to show they can be fully trusted, so that in every way they will make the teaching about God our Saviour attractive. My question now is what is grace? According to Sister Ellen G. White, grace is an attribute of God shown to undeserving human beings. We did not seek after it, but it was sent to search for us. Isn't that amazing? There wasn't a time in our existence when we needed to look for grace, or to look for a reason as to why we were deserving of grace. I mean, if we had to prove that we were deserving of grace, none of us would have grace, right? So, I mean, um, God already knew that we were in need of grace. And he provided it. Verse 11 of Titus 2 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation. This speaks about the source of our salvation, which is grace. It's saying that without grace there is no possibility of being saved. If we read Ephesians 2, verse 8, it reads, For, 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 for it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and it is not from yourselves, it is a gift from God. We then go to Genesis 3, verse 8 to 11. We read that as a consequence of their sins, Adam and Eve felt the need to hide when they heard God's voice. They may have hid out of shame. Hiding in shame is a natural behaviour when we sin. We see this in our everyday lives at school, college, in the workplace, and even at home. Sometimes we feel disconnected from God. We feel ashamed to come before Him and ashamed to come to church sometimes. And attendance becomes occasional and sometimes non existent. But like Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, verse 8 to 11, we would naturally go on to go into hiding. The text says that when they heard the voice of the Lord, God walking in the garden, things had changed from their normal communication with God, which was a face-to-face -face communication. However, God had not changed. He was the same God. He just didn't appear to them in the way that they thought they would. Like when your parents are angry at you and you, and they caught you misbehaving and you think that they're going to shout at you. That's the way you would have thought God would have reacted to them. However, he came to them with the same love and the same kind of tone that he came towards, towards them before they said, This is grace. This guilt that we feel sometimes leads us to shun and hide away from the same God we once welcomed. God's grace did not give up on Adam and Eve. He followed them and called out to them, Where are you? until they responded. God's grace does the same for each and every one of us, young and old. When we go running, grace comes in search of us. God's grace is persistent. We must either answer and welcome the grace or reject it, but grace will never be born. <coughs> to save us from sin and guilt, grace demands that we first recognize our weaknesses, helplessness, and our need for a savior. It is imperative that we recognize our fallen condition. However, the offer of grace does not wait for human beings to recognize their needs first. Grace presents its uniqueness, 
untiring love and unborn character. It challenges human beings to behold and compare, then to make their choice. When we see what we are in comparison to what we could become, and expect, and expect, and accept that we are stubborn, we accept the matchless gift called salvation. Many of our young people are running from the Lord because of music, the pleasure of sexual in intimacy, entertainment, as well as pressures from parents, peers, and others. Some are even running because of the actions of some church members. The Lord did not say, follow the crowd, but he said, follow me. Amen. For that reason, Jesus came running after us. A light guard lost his job because he went into a no swim zone to rescue a drowning man. He knew that it was not part of his job description to rescue anyone outside of that zone. However, he saw a human being in need and he went to his rescue. Hans von Honda said, human beings were victims of deception, but when it occurred, God was already prepared for the emergency. Jesus came and made himself available for our rescue, and now he says, give me your heart, your hands, your desires, your total being, and I will save you. That is what grace does. It's the source of our salvation. Did you know that, grace, that it's grace that makes salvation universally available to all? If we go back to Titus 2 verse 11, it says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Ellen G. White then says, Satan was exalted that he had succeeded in debasing the image of God in humanity. Then Jesus came to restore in man the image of his maker. Now for Christ, can fashion anew the character that has perhaps been ruined by sin. He came to expel the demons that had controlled the will. He came to lift us up from the dust to reshape the marred characters after the pattern of his divine character and to make beautiful with his own glory. We know that in John 3.16, Jesus declared the target of his mission to save whosoever will. Did you catch that? Whosoever will. Nobody is left out of that plan, but it's not by force at the same time. Those that aren't included in the plan are those that choose to walk away or run away from his grace. His saving grace is freely given to all. Our instructions are given in Matthew 28. Verse 19 to 20. <coughs> Go ye into all the world and preach to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We have a universal message that is leading people of all stations and statuses to accept Christ as their personal Savior. Amazingly, in this church, we welcome more young people into membership each year than those who are much older. We thank the Lord for the receptivity of those who are accepting the gospel of Jesus. In conclusion, in John 10, verse 10, Jesus said, The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy, but his purpose is to give a rich and satisfying life to all. The grace that appeared brings salvation to all people, and that is the present reality. Everyone has the opportunity to rejoice in the faith and in a satisfying relationship with Christ. Children, youth, adults can all rejoice alike, for they are all included in the plan of salvation. <coughs>